Hope your Independence Day weekend is going well. It's uh, July 6th, 2024. And I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I hope you'll, you'll come along with me on this journey. Shouldn't take that long. I'm going to read the Declaration of Independence. I, I know, but you know, the thing is, if you look at the biggies, the Bible, the United States Constitution, and the Declaration of Independence, think about how many people have never read those. And then think about all the people that just read part of them, and then they're big on quoting it, like politicians are big on quoting the Bible, they're big on quoting the Constitution, uh, often they get it wrong. Um, and the Declaration of Independence, to me, that's the biggie. Not just because it's Independence Day weekend, but that's the biggie. That's really... Mm, mm. So I'm going to read it. And as I read it, if you would just do me the favor, wherever the word king or Britain is mentioned, because I'm going to read it word for word, which is... A lot of people don't read things word for word anymore because when you do Google or Wiki, they tweak it a little bit, you know? They change our music. They change our documents. They're tearing down our statues. So as I read the Declaration of Independence, it shouldn't take long. This should be a, a short segment so you can get back to you know, whatever you're doing. Maybe you're at the beach. Maybe you're cleaning your guns. Maybe you're cleaning your guns at the beach, which it better be a private beach because that could be illegal. Um, maybe you're checking your rations. Whatever you're doing. We'll make it quick, but I want you to hear why so many of us, probably you included, get frustrated about what the people are not doing right now and what we have the right to do. And you can see why the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution and the Bible, don't worry, I'm not going to read the Constitution and the Bible today, um, are so powerful. I love the Declaration because, you know, people quote part of it all the time. They quote little parts of it. And they leave out the most important part. There's several parts that I think are so important in the Declaration of Independence. There's just, there's just a few sentences that just, okay, that's it. Done. And they never talk about that. They being the public school system. The government. Our own politicians and representatives. Because they know in the, in the power of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. First of all, they're violating it. Right now, our government is violating the Constitution, and they are stomping all over us, and they have pretty much the people that are governing us at this point. They've thrown our Declaration out the window, and you would think more people would be calling attention to this. I know we have a lot of other distractions. And that's the crazy thing about distractions. They distract you. <laughs> but the Declaration of Independence is just so powerful. I wish we all had a copy. We should have like a national reading of it or something. I don't know. About 15 years ago, I read the Declaration of Independence. I was invited to be the reader of the Declaration of Independence at the George Taylor House. George Taylor was one of the signers of the, Independ uh, of the Declaration of Independence in the Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, an hour northwest of Philadelphia. It was such an honor. I was at a podium on a hill. And there were people on the hill, and uh, actually several of them, uh, many of them were reenactors for that July 4th weekend. So they were dressed as from colonial times. And it was, it was, it was amazing. The men, the women, the children on the hill. Uh, I was reading the Declaration of Independence. It was very emotional, very emotional. 
a big a big uh, a big deal in my my little career timeline. So I'm reading it now only for this reason because you might be one of the people that didn't know all the good stuff in there. It's just chock full of vitamins and nutrients that we need for a healthy republic. And I just don't know if enough people are going to want to step up and take it seriously. Obviously, our, a lot of our representatives don't the same way they cast the Constitution aside. Okay, let's do it. And I might stop and just refer to, well, I don't think I need to stop, but every now and then I'll stop and just remember where we are now. It's amazing what's going on now in this country, is it not? And, and yet here we are. You keep, how many times do you hear this on a news show? Someone says, you know, with the Founding Fathers, if the Founding Fathers were here today, the Founding Fathers, the Founding Fathers, the Founding Fathers, and, well, let me put something up here for you. There we go. <clears throat> this will let me scratch my nose or something or, you know. The Declaration of Independence. Action of the Second Continental Congress, July 4th, 1776. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them hold these truths and that they are endowed by the, their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted by men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles, and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate the governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present king of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. Now, what I find interesting about this, this is the part where 
if you replace King of Great Britain and you rec- you you replace Britain with the Biden regime, etc., this this is going to f- fit together frighteningly. And let me find. Let me see if I can find something here. I'm just looking for my notes. I I took some notes here about the actual. Where is it? Well, I'll find them a little later. Let me stay on the. Let me stay on the copy. So here's what they're saying about the king. And again. You tell me if this could not be Joe Biden or any number of presidents that we've had in recent decades. He has refused to assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained. And when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodations of large districts of people unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. When you go through this list, and if you're going through it and you're thinking, pretty pretty soon you no longer see the king, you no longer see the white wigs, and pretty soon you're thinking, wow, think about the way Joe Biden manipulates the process. Think about what he has refused to do and what he has done, but what he's refused to do regarding the will of the people. He has dissolved representatives Houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the right of the people. He has refused for a long time, after such dissolutions, to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remaining in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without, and convulsions within. So again, I'm no longer thinking of a king. I'm thinking of Joe Biden, a dictator, as I read our Declaration of Independence. So here's a guy who's exposing us to the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. Is that not correct? Isn't this a brilliant document that so few people read? Or they just read the first paragraph. What I find with the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, and I I apologize if this is disjointed. I, you know, it's interesting. I'm so emotional about this stuff and these documents and what's happening in our country. I have these elaborate plans to have it just perfect, you know, flawless with music and photos. And I just don't know if I can pull that off because it's so emotional. Does that make any sense? I mean, I could I could do an audio recording of it and then edit it so it's flawless so I don't mispronounce something. I can make it flawless, and then I can do all kinds of fancy stuff to the audio, and then I can put this beautiful montage of photos. But, but people have done that before. 
People have done it, and they've done a beautiful job of it. I just think it's probably a good idea, since we are... It appears that our republic is floundering, and I noticed there's so many idiots on... <laughs> On the news, even this weekend, still calling it a democracy. See, they don't want you to call it a, they don't want you to call it a republic because there's a big difference. And I notice when people quote the Declaration of Independence and when they quote the Constitution, they're always cherry picking things so we as the people don't recognize our power. Right? So, so they don't want to remind you, you know, if the government's really oppressive, you can replace it. They don't want a bunch of people saying, wait, wait a minute, what did you say? I thought it was just, you know, we all had these rights and we hold these truths to be self-evident. But are you also saying that we have every right as the people because the government only gets its power from the governed? So they're already violating most documents that were written to keep them on the straight and narrow. They're, they're already, they've been doing this for years. This is not just a Joe Biden thing. This is a multi-president thing. Let's go back. Again, they're talking about the king here. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for the purpose, for that purpose, obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. Does that not sound like the Biden regime? He has obstructed the administration of justice. Oh, you don't say. It's all in the Declaration of Independence, which is amazing. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their office and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a, multiple of, a multitude of new offices. Does that not sound familiar to you? They're talking about the king, but we could be talking about any number of presidents of the United States. They have erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people, ATF, IRS, DHS, TSA, holy moly, that's not in there. Think about that. It's all in our founding documents. That's why they only teach part of the founding documents. They don't want to teach a bunch of school kids if there's a problem with the government, you've got to replace it. If they're not following the Constitution, you have to replace it. If, Joe, if there's someone like Joe Biden in office, he needs to go to jail for the following reasons. They're not teaching that. They're teaching all the beautiful, fluffy stuff that's just as important. All men are created equal, of course. Yes. But if you've noticed, they leave out all the things that the brilliant founding fathers put in place. So if we ever run up against a Joe Biden, or they're taking away freedom of speech, or they're taking our guns, which should be complete by the end of the year, or stealing elections, we can put a stop to it right then. It says we can. I'm going to read that again because that's, <clears throat> that's one of my favorites because those of us that want smaller government, we point this out all the time and we just, 
I think what it is, and, and I think this is part of it, I think the problem is because it was long ago, okay, and it was on parchment, and because they wore wigs and very uncomfortable shoes, I think people look back on it and go, well, you know, that was that. That's not now. I mean, come on. It's like when people say that stupid comment about the Second Amendment that, well, that only applied to muskets. You know, there's, there's a level of ignorance with that comment that blows me away. Because to, to use the musket argument for the Second Amendment is to totally ignore the brilliance and the, and the magnitude of declarations and, and documents. Even this line here, which is a random line, as you can see, above John Hancock's signature, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine. And then it continues, obviously. Let's continue. They're talking about the king. I'm talking about the president. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. Have you been to New York lately? Yeah, those are soldiers on the subway. He has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. Now, this is a biggie. This is a biggie. They're talking about the king. I'm talking about the president. Do you believe that you and I have control as the Constitution says, of our military. Again, I'm jumping to the Constitution for a minute. We're reading the Declaration of Independence. No, we no longer have that control. The president sends the military wherever he wants to send them. And you can kick and scream all you want. The, the money that the president wants to go, or our government, what they want to do with it, it's going. Ukraine, Israel, South America, wherever. We no longer have control of that. They will send, meaning our government will send our children wherever they damn well please. And if we push back or protest, we'll be relabeled something. Something you need to watch out for, since we're kind of on the brink of some really nasty dust-ups, maybe with China, maybe with Russia, and of course, everybody, the people, not everybody does, but those that hate us in the Middle East, there's enough of them here, they could start a Middle East war in the United States. Anyway, let's get back to the Declaration of Independence. Referring to the king or president, he has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. Declaration of Independence. What what is that all about? That's about Every single time some fool that took an oath on the Bible to protect our Constitution, a sovereign country, and they say, well, you know, the United Nations said, the World Health Organization said, the EU said, the World Economic Forum said, it's all in here. Everything that's happening now that has millions of Americans concerned, anxious, and angry, it's all in here. 
None of this was made up by us. This was not made up by MAGA people at a rally. This is in the, in the Declaration of Independence and nobody talks about it. This is one of the reasons, this is one of the reasons the colonies told Britain to go blank itself because they can bind with others, the king, just like our president does. What does our president do? Our president can bind with other leaders to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution. And unacknowledged by our laws. So there's a whole bunch of crap going on in this country that's illegal. It's unconstitutional. Whether it's a vaccine, whether it a great example would be the stolen election. The Constitution says one day, one vote, one person, one day. And yet here we are. So he has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. If that doesn't sum up the Biden regime and numerous others, pretended legislation. So they make laws and edicts and declarations and they just violate the Constitution and they just make things up. That's why so many of our rights in the Constitution, jumping over to the Constitution for a minute, are being violated. They're not supposed to be abridged or infringed on. No one's supposed to limit your free speech. No one's supposed to tell you you can only buy 10 rounds of ammo for that gun. No one's supposed to say, well, you're not going to get a grand jury this time. They just violate, violate, violate. And they do it in the case of emergencies, and that's when they dump it on everybody, right? Look at what they did with COVID. To me, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. But the founding fathers knew this, and they had a problem with it then. If our guy, if our president, king, dictator, whatever Joe Biden is this afternoon, if he's teaming up with the idiot in France and the moron in the UK and that fool in Canada to subject us to jurisdiction foreign to our constitution, which he is, what is that all about? Let's continue. For quartering large bodies of armed troops among us. Anybody paying attention to the bases in this country right now? Where is the one place you think we should have troops? I think we should have troops at the border. I think we are being invaded. I think we should have troops at the border. I think we should free up the Border Patrol so they don't have to uh, uh, take on the role. In other words, ICE and the Border Patrol and so many trained men and women are being removed from their element of making sure we're secure and safe and, and processing correctly people that want to get in here legally and people that are trying to get in here illegally. I think it's just all a mishmash now because the, the, our king, Joe Biden, the Biden regime, whatever, is working so hard to get more population in our country to disrupt us. For protecting them by a mock trial, this is, this is about the king, what he was doing to protect his troops. Now, remember, there's a slight difference here, and you can draw the parallel. I draw the parallel between federal, federal troops, federal imposition and overreach on the municipal and the state. But here, they're talking about, obviously, Britain had troops in the colonies, and I quote, they're holding 
the king responsible for, and I quote, protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states. Do you know how many people have been killed by the ATF this year? And what, and what relationship they had to government? How many people were uh, lost their lives on Jan 6? What happened to the people? What happened to the federal government agents that participated in the death of four American citizens on January 6th? Nothing. Nothing. It'd be no different if there were British troops there and a British soldier took a musket and, and shot Ashley Babbitt in the skull and then walked away and got a promotion and a raise and wrote a book. The parallels to where this country is at this very moment to the Declaration of Independence are uncanny. Ready for this one? For cutting off our trade with all parts of the world. So again, these are the reasons and the grievances that the Founding Fathers and the writers of the Declaration of Independence so brilliantly laid out before they told England to go jump off a cliff. You cut off trade with all parts of the world. Who has Joe Biden been cutting off trade with and why? You sh that's a great research project. Why? Why did Joe Biden cut off trade with Russia? Come on, Ken. Why? What was the real reason? This is one of my favorites, right from the ripped from the pages of the Declaration of Independence. For imposing taxes on us without our consent. Do you know how many times per day we are taxed without our consent? We've accepted it. We've accepted it. We are taxed forever. Our bodies are taxed. Everything is taxed. You can pay your house off, you're still getting taxed. You can die, you're still getting taxed. You can pay all your taxes, you're still getting taxed. You buy something, you sell it again, you're getting taxed. That's all unconstitutional. All of it. Income tax is unconstitutional. But that's for another day. That's when everybody rolls their eyes because we've all accepted it. And is it too late? Probably. Probably at this point. I think it is too late. I think there are people in our government that would kill us like that if enough of us started to cut off the money flow. I mean, I think, that, I think that's one area of our government that they're really serious about. I'll give them that much. They, they are not going to shut down human trafficking, and they don't really care about that border. But if the money stops, you're going to see some citizens dying at the hands of the government much more often. And that's not the way the government set up, but the people who took over the government, that's their lens. Do you think Jill Biden is driving into wherever she drives into today saying, wow, I hope we can secure that border and get the economy back on track for everybody? No, she's wondering how much power she'll lose if this whole Biden campaign blows up in her face. Because if Jill Biden cared about Joe, and if she cared about us, Joe wouldn't have even ran in 2020, let alone stole it. Let's go back to the Declaration of Independence. I know this is a weird 
trail. For depriving us, in many cases, of the benefits of trial by jury. I'm telling you, you got to read the Declaration of Independence this weekend. All of it. All of it. All of it. For depriving us, comma, in many cases, comma, of the benefits of trial by jury. Well, golly gee, how often does that happen? Every day. 95% of trials don't go in front of a jury. And the Constitution says you're guaranteed a grand jury and a jury of your peers. Did you know that? Yeah. The problem is a lot of governors and senators and congressmen and judges really don't give a damn about the Constitution. And they certainly don't give a damn about the Declaration of Independence because they would not deprive us of the benefits of a trial by jury. And there wouldn't be people locked up since January 6th or immediately after in jail right now without a jury, without evidence, without charges. Now, here again is where I, I, this is a comparison. This is about the former king, the former king of England. But they're, they're outlining these complaints. The citizens, the people, are outlining these complaints. And they're saying to the king, here's why we're going to be independent. And if you have a problem with it, ooh, it's going to be nasty. Okay. For transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses. Now tell me the difference between the King of England and the British Empire transporting colonists who protested against taxes and other issues transporting them beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses. What does that sound like to you? Does that sound like Joe Biden transporting you from, you know, your two-bedroom apartment in Idaho to Washington, D.C., and keeping you locked up there for, and I quote, pretended offenses? The Founding Fathers knew this was coming, they planned for it, and they wrote an outline for it. The problem is, the majority of Americans are uneducated on this. They're uneducated on our history. And I'll speak for myself, we're all too comfortable. We're all too comfortable. I mean, we are living now under a dictatorship. And a lot of people have it pretty damn good. Now, when we see the real results from a lot of Joe Biden's policies, especially if they take out Donald Trump and put Joe Biden in again, then I think we'll see. I think we're going to feel the pinch. Here we go. Back to the Declaration of Independence. For abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments. Wait a minute. What does that sound like? For taking away our charters, okay, reducing state power, abolishing our most valuable laws, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, 
We have a right to pursue life. Liberty in the pursuit of happiness. We ha that's a right. We have a right to free speech. It's gone. We have a right to the Second Amendment. It's gone. We have the right to the Fourth Amendment. We can't be searched and people can't just roll up and do whatever they want. That's exactly what they do. The FBI does exactly that. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our government, we continue for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves, this is the king now, or in 2024, the Biden regime. Imagine the Biden regime now, right? For suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. So, you tell me so far, and don't worry, we're done in a second. Again, it's a brilliant document. It, it's not that long. I'm making it long. I want you to think about this. You, we're, we're told, uh, we're, we're always told this is, this is old, crusty, dust-covered documents that don't apply. It's such a crock. These things are razor sharp. The brilliance of this is razor sharp. It's like the Bible. It's like the Constitution. The people that wrote these things were, let me just say, better men than us. They had the brains and the courage. The people that wrote these things, they were carving this stuff in stone because they knew a lot of weak men and women, a lot of weak people, would populate the government that they designed and screw it up. They knew this would happen. That's why so many founding fathers and, and philosophers and historians have said this government is designed for a moral people, <clears throat> Christian people, uh, ethical people. This, this system is designed for good men, honest men, it's a system that will work to help them and the people. When you put criminals in the system, for example, I'm thinking Joe Biden, just off the top of my head. Now you can manipulate the system. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. Now... That's the king. I get it. The colonies across the sea, Britain. <clears throat> but let's look at that again. Let's let's make see if we can put that over the the Joe Biden regime. He has abdicated government here. Let's say Texas. By declaring us out of his protection at the border and waging war against us. Does that not it? Does that not sound familiar? How dare you take up arms against illegal foreign nationals? If you do that, if you push back Texas, if you try to secure the border from an invasion, your own government under Joe Biden will turn on you and you'll be going to jail. Don't you roll up on the border with your shotgun and, and your kit because you'll be going to jail. He has abdicated government by declaring us out of his protection. Hey, Texas, you're on your own. Hey, Chicago, you're on your own. Hey, New York, you're on your own, man. You're on your own. 30-plus million illegal foreign nationals in America? Good luck. We just want to get them to the polls. And if you try to stop them, if you Americans, if you arm up, if you get serious and do something crazy like blocking a road, you're in trouble. Well, unless you're blocking a road and you're wearing a G-string and fake boobies, then you that's okay. 
He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coast, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. Now, we could, we could nitpick on this one. I mean, we could nitpick and we, we could spend a whole day on fires and riots that are allowed and some are not, right? I think all, you know what I think of when I, when I see this, this phrase? I think of BLM. I think of a sanctioned terrorist organization that is endorsed and supported by people like the Obamas, the Clintons, and the Bidens. Burnt our towns and destroyed the lives of our people. We continue. He is, referring to the king, at the time, transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy. Scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. So that's about the king and that's about them bringing mercenaries in because that was a big thing. The America was always recruiting people. The colonies were recruiting people. Hey, help us fight Britain. And Britain was saying, hey, you want to make some money? You want to go kick some American ass? Now, let's pretend it's Joe Biden. Let's pretend it's 2024. Transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries. How many people has Joe Biden brought into this country by aircraft and bus and train? You can laugh all you want, but it's right here. This is why I want you to read it. And again, you probably already have read all this. Read it again. You're going to want to have a copy of this. Especially in the next couple of months. You're going to want to have this. So think about that for a moment. Think about where we are in 2024. Think about how many uh, segments just on this show. The last segment I did when we had uh, Christy Hutcherson on. The people pouring over the border. Think about, listen to this. This is from the Declaration of Independence. And it's so relevant today. It's dead on that some of our presidents are doing exactly what kings and dictators did and they're doing he is at the time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death desolation and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. So what has our government been doing, especially for the last three years? Bringing in mercenaries, criminals, people that are let out of prison, gang members, members of ISIS, members of Al-Qaeda, members of the Russian mob, uh, members of Middle Eastern criminal cartels it says here transporting what was the king doing well i'll tell you what i uh why don't you all get on this ship here's what i'm going to pay you go over to america kick some ass and then just disappear there's a bonus in it for you the fact that people are so unfamiliar with history this is why this is why Many of us are saying the clock is ticking on a republic. It is no longer a republic. The clock is ticking right before our eyes. And we're being distracted, overwhelmingly distracted. So we can't stop and take a breath and focus. And this is why the the border, it should be the biggest issue in the history of this country. The fact that we, we are now occupied by 
foreign nationals. We are occupied by foreign nationals. If there was any other country on earth that had the percentage of illegal foreign nationals on their soil throughout their lands and cities and infrastructure, they would be considered occupied or under invasion by definition. This is why public schools don't want this taught. They want the new constitution, the new, the new statues, the, the new national anthem. Oh, we don't do it that way. We do it this way. Well, that's how you lose your country. Because this is the way you do it if you keep your country. These two, Constitution and Declaration, he has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country to become the executioners of their friends and brethren or to fall themselves by their hands. So this is something that a, a lot of people don't realize that the Brits would capture Americans or soon to be Americans and force them to kill Americans. Does that sound familiar to you? Think about that for a moment. We often have that conversation. Do you think? Do you think the? Do you think if if Joe Biden said to the Marines, "I need you to go to Philly and start killing people," you think they do it? I don't want to offend anybody, but aren't you going to follow orders? I mean, look at all the look at all the FBI people that follow orders. Look at the people that follow orders. He has constrained our fellow militaries captive. World, I think we just lost audio. I hope it's back. Are you going to tell me that the general millies of the world are not going to, if ordered and if incentivized, go after the American public? And I know he's retired. Uh, use Austin then. Secretary of Defense. He has excited domestic insurrection among us. This is the, these are the colonists. The, these are the American colonists writing the reasons why they're done. They're done with the king. At the very, the very beginning, they were nice enough to say... Remember, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to separate. So they were nice enough before they started killing British soldiers. They were nice enough to say, look, give you one more shot. Get out of our face. Get out of our face. You're violating too many things. Get out of our face. So another thing the king did, and again, it's 2024, I get it. Then replace, replace the word he with Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Just replace he with Joe Biden. He has excited domestic insurrection among us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers the merciless Indian savages whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. Now this is a tricky one, obviously. But is it safe to say that under the current Biden regime, there is an effort to excite domestic insurrection and an effort to put us in a position where we are fighting others that we may not even want to fight or wouldn't normally fight. Is that a fair statement? 
Is it a fair statement to say every time you turn on the TV, someone's trying to get one group to go after another? The last thing this regime wants, or the last thing a king wants, is for his subjects to all say, hey, we're alike. You're right. What's with the king? Let's kick his ass. That's the last thing a king wants. So they do so the king just like a bad president does everything they can to disrupt we the people to pry our power away to confuse us to alienate us and to violate rights that we have and we happen to have in the United States more rights than any other country but we're also getting more rights violated at this point in time because of our current leadership in every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress. In the most humble terms, the signers go on to say of the Declaration of Independence, our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. Let's take that for a minute. It's 2024. You and I and millions of Americans have petitioned for redress because that's a constitutional right now this is the part i really want you to let sink in when you get your copy and keep it on you at all times okay every stage of these oppressions so every single stage you 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 wanted to force uh experimental drugs on us you you stole the election you refused to close the border um you're changing our language you're targeting people for religious beliefs. You're arresting people for political beliefs. Every single stage, what have we done? We have peacefully petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. And what has Joe Biden done? And I'm quoting the Declaration of Independence. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. Do you see the brilliance of this document? Do you see why once you get past that beautiful, flowery, overquoted one paragraph and you get into the meat of it, then you realize, damn, we do have a leg to stand on. And when you combine this with the Constitution, and I would say throw in the Bible for good measure because I think it's important that God is in the mix. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. Think about that. Think about the men and women who have petitioned the court. Please look at the evidence for the stolen election. Please look at the evidence for people dying from COVID. What happens to those people? with the king or the dictator or President Biden. Your repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. Translation, shut up, sit down, and do what you're told. Let's continue with the Declaration of Independence. Almost done now. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. So it doesn't matter if you're in line through blood or if you're in line through political party. If you're behaving like a tyrant, you're not fit to rule me. Joe Biden, the way he behaves, the way many presidents have behaved, they're not fit to rule a free people. Continuing, final three paragraphs. You could blow through this in about, oh my, what, six minutes maybe? Maybe five or six minutes? Yeah. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. Again, 
Where is that parallel? We're now in 2024. This is the Declaration of Independence. Where is the parallel? Okay. Just replace British by federal. Just replace British by D.C. Now we have been wanting in attentions to our Washington, D.C. brethren. We have warned them from time to time of their attempts by their legislature to extend unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. What do you think Washington, D.C. has been doing for the last 100 years? This is not a new thing. This is just a continually ignored thing. And we're going to ignore this to our own... That's our own demise. At our own demise. It's it, We're going to ignore this to the point where you may not even be able to read it next year. It may be labeled as something insurrectionist related. Yeah, we don't want you reading that on the internet. That could cause what? A population to wake up and rebel? Of course, they don't want that happening. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our emigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity. And we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like the DOJ, the FBI, the DHS, the Biden administration, half the judges you know? They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice. We've tried. We've done it peacefully. We've petitioned for redress. We've listed it. We've documented it. We've gone through the constitutional machinations. Here's this. Here's this. And what does our current government do? Answer us with repeated injury. You want to call us out? We'll destroy you. You want to sue this person or sue this because of the election? We'll destroy you. They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity. We must, therefore, acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them, as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world, for the rectitude and our intentions do in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states and they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connections between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as free and independent states they have full power to levy war conclude peace contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And then the 56 men signed it. So there it is. Enjoy your Independence Day weekend. Reread that. And you'll realize where we are as a country now. 
Now, some of your liberal friends may call it overdramatic, but for those of us that have lost speech and lost many other rights, and you may be among them, people in the audience that you immediately said today, Joe Biden. And that's a problem. It's a problem. If the roadmaps and the rule books and the and and this top one, the Constitution, it it this is what these men and women in Washington and throughout our state governments have sworn to protect. And they have done such a poor job of it that you could go through the Declaration of Independence like I did, and highlight where the wheels are coming off our republic. And we're not talking about in the next 30 years. We're talking about months. Take a look at what's happening now in Washington, D.C. And enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I'll see you Monday, if not sooner.